One of the issues that has concerned quite a number of our clients is this question around fraud. And we wanted to work with Shillings this morning to just give you a bit of a taster on some of the things going on and hopefully uh, leave you a little more aware of the risks that are out there. And there are two things at the moment that we're seeing as a bank, and I just wanted to alert you to them so that you don't fall foul of these two. The first is what's known as invoice fraud, email invoice fraud. I don't know whether you ever receive an invoice from someone, a supplier that you've dealt with, <coughs> who sends you the invoice with their payment details, and then you probably go online and enter those details and make payment, and you don't think twice about that. Unfortunately, it's actually incredibly easy for a fraudster to intercept an email and to change those payment details. And this happens a lot. So if you do receive an email from a known supplier, really, you should phone them and say, can I just check your bank details just to make sure, especially if it's the first time you've paid them. The other one that's doing the rounds, and it's almost incredible to think this happens, but it really does, and very intelligent people have fallen for it. Are people who phone up and say, I'm phoning to improve your broadband. Most of us probably have slower broadband than we really like, so it sounds sort of quite an attractive offer. I'm calling from BP. Anyway, they are very skilled at manipulating people into giving away their bank security details. And of course, you must never, ever give away a bank security detail, but people do. And armed with those details, again, they pay away the money. Good news is, from a business perspective, there are very comprehensive cyber insurance policies available. The bad news is, as an individual, you're considered a bad risk. And so many insurers have not really developed personal cyber insurance cover for you. Now, you will see if on some high net worth household insurance policies now, you're getting cyber cover as standard. But that um, cover is limited and you'll realise that actually it's very expensive putting you back in the position you were before, both financially and reputationally, if you have been the victim of a serious hack. Put yourself in, in an attacker's shoes. If they wanted to target you, what would they do? So straight away, if, if I was the, the attacker and I was going to target one of you in the audience, I'll think, what information is online about you? What are you posting? What social media websites are you on? So I'll know what behavioural patterns that you are doing. Second of all, I'll look around, look at your behaviour physically, seeing what you do on day to day. Everyone's a creature of habit, so everyone has the same habits they do every day. Get coffee in the morning, goes on the same trains, same times, etc. and so on. Thirdly, I would look at what devices you have. That's the actual website of the company itself, Aragon Trading. But if you look at the actual email address, a lot, a lot of people will probably see it, but the, that there's an A missing. Now, psychology-wise, when you're reading, you can probably work out the actual word itself by looking at the first and the last letter. You don't actually look at the middle and you, you start reading through. It's quite, attackers are getting quite clever and a lot of people are missing that. People are busy in day-to-day -day lives. They don't look at these kind of details. They'll look at the contents and then press what they need to do and send it across. The second one is it causes a sense of urgency. So the date this email was sent was on the 26th. And it's out asking you to do something about your account by close of play on the 26th. So it's making you think, I have to be quite urgent, I have to do this, it's quite important. The third thing it's asking is saying that it's creating a, a scaremongering tactic is, if I don't do this, something's going to happen to my account, so I need to do this ASAP. Now it says, please click here on this link. Now, this is a very clever way of hiding the actual website itself. So it says, please click here. But when you hover over it, it's actually going to a, another website called HackAttack or another IP address. So these are the telltale signs to look for on the phishing email. 
Now, if you're not um, familiar with getting an email in with these links in, or you're not, you're not sure that the attachment comes, don't open it. As Quinton was saying, call the person that's actually sent you the email to verify if that email was sent by that person. Eavesdropping devices are on the rise. They are commonly available online, and there's actually a spy shop in near Green Park Station that actually sells these devices. So this looks like a normal plug, works like a normal plug, perfect. If you look closely, and I'll pass this around, there's a little hole at the bottom. This hole is a microphone, and when you open it, there's a SIM card inside. Now this is actually programmed so I can plug this in and as long as it's got power, I can be anywhere in the world, I can call the number on this SIM card and I can listen into the conversation that's happening. You can all, I must say this is not activated so don't worry. Um, I can also set it so it runs on sound, so whenever it hears a sound it will call me and then I can listen into the conversation. So these devices are readily available, just like pass that around here. A lot of you noticed probably me walking around, having my morning coffee, normal coffee cup, nothing in the coffee cup obviously. But this lid is not your normal lid. It's actually got a camera built in, infrared camera, and it's got a microphone. And it's also a good coffee lid as well. So. <laughs> now, a lot of people log in to coffee shop Wi-Fi's and hotel Wi-Fi's. So I had this device running this morning when everyone was walking in. Now this just looks like a normal Wi-Fi access point, which it is. But what you can do with it is quite a lot more. So this is what you call a man in the middle attack. Uh, so this device will be sitting in between your device and the internet. You can be using your device once you've logged into this Wi-Fi access point and use it uh, to go out onto the internet and browse online, you still send and receive emails, etc., and so on. I, as an attacker, can be listening into that traffic. I didn't listen to any of your traffic going this morning. All I got was dev device names. Uh, I won't reveal which devices they were, um, but as you can see, when people log into Wi-Fi, how easy it is to obtain that kind of uh, information. Now, a lot of people use end-to-end uh, -end encryption, such as WhatsApp, Signal, Wire, which is great, your content is protected. But again, as an attacker, I'm building up a picture on what apps you are using, so I can actually tailor my attack to you. You also got to remember, if you're not using your device and you've connected to the Wi-Fi, your device is always communicating with the outside world. Your apps are always sending and receiving information, your location data, etc., and so on. So you always got to remember, is it, do you need to really connect to the Wi-Fi when you're in a coffee shop early for five, 10 minutes? Is it a legitimate Wi-Fi hotspot? If you're in doubt, ask the staff member. Don't just connect to it because it says Cafe Nero or pret manger or whatnot or the Soho Hotel, in this case. Uh, and always just remain vigilant. If you don't want to speak about, if send, uh, speak about it in public, don't send it in public. How do we know the coffee shops may or may not be collecting data? So things to negate that is obviously use a VPN, which is a virtual private network. That basically creates a tunnel, an encrypted tunnel from your device to the internet. So anything going in and out from your device will be protected. And also to use apps such as Wire, Signal, and WhatsApp, because it's end-to-end -end encryption. So if you are going to message to send it, use those kind of um, secure comms. One of the things that we do for an increasing number of clients, which is a, a, a sort of a bedrock to protecting privacy, is what we call a digital footprint report, where we look uh, where our intelligence team um, and one of our partners, Juliet, is, is over there. You can talk to her later. Um, we'll, uh, so only using open source intelligence, so nothing spooky or underhand, but um, we'll comb social media, um, uh, the vast number of, of databases that are out there that may hold 
information about you and aggregate that to give you a complete jigsaw of the information that is out there about you. Um, and that's, that's the danger. It's not, um, or, or rather, let me put it another way, the, the danger is the aggregation of all these tiny bits of personal information that are out there and publicly available about you that you're probably not even aware of. And it's piecing these things together, it's joining the dots. And it's that joining the dots that enables um, people to create a picture of you that then allows them to produce the sort of phishing emails that Quinton talked about right at the beginning, where you read that and you are convinced that the person who's written, that, that you're convinced that the, uh, per, that email was sent by the author that it pertains to be from, and that it contains personal detail about you that only that person, in theory, only that person would know. And again, Claire, you talked about just the number of people that are, even the language we use around this, the number of people who are falling for this, it's very difficult not to fall for it, is the reality. So ultimately, protecting your security, protecting your privacy is about understanding what information is out there about you and taking steps to control how much of that information is, is out there. First off, you have to realize that you are a target. This, this idea that I'm not high profile, I'm not rich enough, I'm not, I, I'm not whatever to attract sort of any attention. It simply doesn't apply. Don't think it won't happen to you. It will at some point. Um, physical threats uh, are there just as digital threats are and increasingly they're, 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 they're packaged together. So be careful what you plug into a computer. Malware can spread through encrypted drives. Practice safe clicking. I don't know what, <laughs> what yeah, you, but. I mean, so, sorry, uh, so if you're not sure of the attachment or the link, don't click it. If you're not 100% sure, just don't click it. There's no point in taking the risk. You can always hover over a link to see where the actual address is going. But if you're not sure, don't click it. Um, G talked about beware of browsing. Um, if, you're not, if you're not willing to speak about it in public, don't send, don't send it in, in public. Um, back up important data, perhaps have various levels of security for um, data to reflect the various levels of sensitivity that you might, uh, that you might hold. Um, again, six, we say get interested in your data. Really what we're talking about in the theme of this morning is about just raising, just becoming more aware of the nature of the threats that are out there and the value of, of your personal data. Um, Correct misinformation. Um, where, there is, where there is wrong information about you in the, pub, in the public domain, where there's blog sites, articles, whatever it is, um, it's a relatively easy process to just get that corrected. Um, and again, that's, that, that can be very important in, in protecting your overall, uh, the overall picture of, of you. Um, increasingly, the sort of issues we have are not with a certain strata in, in, a, in a family who are aware that they're, they know, they understand the nature of the risks, but very frequently are undermined by either the third generation, the silver surfers, or the youngest generation who have slightly different uh, attitudes towards their, their privacy, perhaps. Um, and in them sharing information with the world, they may include information about you that you don't want shared. Remain pr privacy aware, and finally, if, if the message hasn't landed already, pre prevention is the best form of defence. Um, again, back to just being aware.